Well, my name is Scott Thomas. I work for the Bureau of Land Management in Burns District. I've been the district archaeologist here for 21 years, going on 22. Well, I, we were working at a site called Sheep Mountain up the road about six miles. Uh, the University of Oregon Field School and BLM cooperated on it, and I kept driving back and forth every day because I was bringing water, bringing out supplies, and I saw this rim down here, this basalt rim kind of peeking up over the sagebrush, and I thought, you know, I've got to have some fun today. So I came down to the site and uh, came here, and the, and the sagebrush was seven or eight feet tall, which usually means there's deep soils here, deep sediments, which is a good place to do archaeology if you want to find buried things. And then I also did a little bit of working around on top of the rim, and I found a lot of points of spear points that are probably 8,000 years or older. Um, and that told me that there may be a site here that's 8,000 years or older, um, and it also may be buried. I also noticed on the ground around where we're standing, noticed a lot of charcoal discoloration. It was black right up against the rim here. And I found a few artifacts, uh, found a few obsidian flakes and a ground stone uh, tool laying right here in front of the front of the rim. So I thought, wow, this is a really good place to live, place to work, and a, a good place for people to live in the past. So the next fall, we came out and did a couple weeks of test excavations and discovered that there was indeed a, a site here and buried very deep too, because um, I think the deepest we've gone is about 13 feet, and there's evidence of human occupation at least down to 11 to 12 feet. So that's what I. That's why we ended up here, and we've been here for since 2011. Well, during the during the first habitation, which we think may be as old as 15,800. Uh, we have radiocarbon dates now that go back to about 10,000, but we think that this was actually a flowing stream at least at the 15,000 mark. Um, this would have been a class two rapid right here off to my right. Um, flowed year round, because in those days it was wetter and cooler, water accumulated in the lakes and the lakes overflowed and came into these streams. And we think probably within a few thousand years, it started to fill in with sediment. Um, the site was formed by sand being deposited by the creek coming by, and then eventually it became, probably up until maybe 8,000 years ago, there was a wet meadow here or even a seasonal flow of water. Um, and I mean by seasonal, it flowed probably in the spring, but there had to have been water flowing nearby or under, just under the ground here because we have evidence from hearths all the way back to 10,000 and we started about eight, that tells us the plants that grew here are the kind of plants you find today, streamside plants you find today in Eastern Oregon. Like uh, you, we found tules, which are a, a marsh plant. We found willow, which is a streamside riparian plant. We found serviceberry, which is sort of, sort of riparian. Um, and even in our, our 10,000 year, well, nine to 10,000 year old hearths, we found a, a seed of a plant called wapato, which is a plant that doesn't really even grow here anymore. It's common on the west side of Oregon. Um, it's a, it's a, a marsh plant or a lake plant that produces a tuber on the bottom end and that's edible and people used it. And in fact, I think there's Wapato Lake near Portland um, or Wapato Valley or anyway, it's, it's a well-known plant on the west side of the, United, of the west side of Oregon. So um, we know it was wetter here and we know there were lakes close by and I'm relatively certain that there was water flowing here at least until 10,000 years ago, maybe even later. Well, they're digging for any, any evidence of human occupation, and it, it can mean just simply obsidian flakes or rocks that have been placed in a certain pattern, or it could be uh, uh, art of, what we call artifacts, which would be like uh, portions of a spear point, uh, which we usually see around here are called stemmed points. They have, a, they have kind of a rounded or square stem, and they were used relatively early, in fact. Um, nearby Paisley Caves have it, uh, evidence for them going back 13,400 years ago, so they're fairly ancient in this part of the world. Um, 
But we're primarily interested in, and we're, another thing we're trying to find is volcanic tephra, volcanic ash. We have Mount St. Helens ash here, which dates to about 7,600 years ago. And we also have another ash here from Mount St. Helens of all places that dates to about 15,800 years ago. And our, in our first two forays out here, we found that 15,800 year old ash. And underneath that, we found camel, camel tooth fragments and below that, we found a, a really pretty orange agate scraper slash knife multi-tool. So we have evidence of pre-15,800 year occupation here. And that's really what we're looking to find more of. We, and unfortunately, because the site is 13 feet deep or more, um, it takes a long time to dig from the surface down to there. And we're still not there everywhere. And that's what we're doing now. We, uh, unfortunately, right, right now we have... We have two episodes, we, one we think at 8,000, one we think at 10,000, of this rock face calving off rocks. And what's, what's impeding our progress at about the 10,000 year level is those, are those rocks. We need to go through those rocks with, with drills, drill through the rocks and then hammer them into pieces and take them out of here, and we haven't finished doing that. Um, this level behind me where they're working uh, down deep is covered with rocks, and it's really difficult to dig. So. Once we punch through the rocks, then we're into the 12, 13, 14,000 year old dates. And we're hoping to find that early occupation below those rocks. Well, they, first of all, they tell us that our past, or at least the, the uh, Native American tribes, the local tribes, their past is really deep here. Um, they talk about being here since the Cascades were being formed. And that to me means that they were, they were here when things, like Mount, when things like Mount Mazama blew up 7,600 years ago. So they have oral history that passes on down that, that says those things. <clears throat> and I also think that it tells us that Americans, the first Americans were here much longer than we thought. The, the traditional thought is they were here, they came here over the Bering Strait um, probably 13,000 or a little more years ago. <clears throat> but now we're seeing it. Paisley Cave is one place where we've got 14,300 years ago. And here we may even be, even be a little bit older. Um, the picture of, of the antiquity of people in North America is changing dramatically. Every year it seems like more sites are being discovered that, that show that people are here earlier than 13,000 years ago. Um, still not like the standards of Europe and Asia where they're there for, they basically evolved. But um, we... We're seeing they were here much earlier than we thought. No, no, BLM, BLM does contribute some work. Um, in fact, one of my able-bodied co-workers is at the bottom of one of the units digging in rocks right now. Um, but um, our biggest, we have two partners here, really. We have University of Oregon Museum of Natural and Cultural History. They've done field schools here 2000 and 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then this year they're out here with a, a volunteer and student crew without a field school. And our other partner is the Oregon Archaeological Society. Um, they are take an active part in, in doing many, many different activities here in Burns, ELM. But this is one of the places they've come every year for the last, I think, four years, where they come out and they excavate the, the top part of the site so that our students can start near the, closer to the bottom. Um, and they're really well trained and know how to excavate and they follow the instruction of Pat and they, they follow the instructions of Pat and his assistants really well. So, um, but they've been a huge help. Um, and I, I think at this year we've been out, they've been out four weeks and we've had at least four volunteers per week from the OAS. So the, between the two of those groups, we usually have lots of people here to excavate. Well, next year for this site is we're hoping to have a field school next year here. Um, and we're also hoping to, before the field school starts, my plan is to get out here with our, our drill and our various uh, our impact drill and all the drills and wedges and things we have to use to break up rocks and try to clear all the rocks out of the deepest units because that's what's keeping us from excavating to the bottom. And by the bottom, I mean bedrock. Um, 
those are in the way. We need to get them out of here so we can get to bedrock. So that's the first thing we'll do. And then next year, we're gonna to try to finish all these deep units, get them to bedrock. Um, one in particular that we're not working on right now, it's sandbagged in on the other side of the excavation area. We wanna get unit 30, which is the one that's sandbagged down to the bottom too, because that's where we found the St. Helens ash, the sheep teeth fragments and uh, the orange agate tool. So we'd like to find a little more evidence of that so we can substantiate that date. The sandbags uh, are great. We, we put them in, they're kind of a pain to put in and out every year. But normally uh, when you backfill a site, you backfill it with soil, sediment. Basically the piles that you dug and screened. This way we bag it and put it back in bags so, so you don't have to actually shovel it out the next year. You just take the bags out. Um, the sandbags, when we finish here, we're going to have, it's going to be sandbagged. And then we'll cover it with a, a layer of soil that, that keeps the sandbags from being exposed because they fall apart when they get exposed. So that's the plan with the sandbags. And plus, they tend to leave the site really clean. There aren't, there aren't any big gouges and, and fall in from the site, the sides of the, of the excavation, and they protect it. So. Well, I, I know that uh, Patrick and I, Patrick O'Grady and I have given a, num a number of talks based on the site and we want to continue to do that. Um, we've given talks at Oregon Archaeological Society. I've given talks to the Archaeological Society of Central Oregon in Bend. Um, we've given papers on the site um, at professional meetings. And our plan is to eventually publish, uh, publish with, through peer-reviewed journals the results of what we found here. But we also uh, feel an obligation to the public to be able to produce either brochures they can, people can read or to give talks to various civic organizations and archaeological clubs and even to the Harney County Hist Historical Society, that kind of thing. Um, that's our commitment to doing public education. So that's, that's our plan for now.